Hi, this is part two of my Uber Letterbox, where I show you how to send notifications to your phone when someone delivers a letter. If you haven't seen part one yet, then check that out first. So, I have my Letterbox sending MQTT messages to my MQTT broker when someone delivers a letter or when someone checks the mail. But that's only the first part. Now to have notifications sent to my phone. For this I'll be using MQTT Warn with IFTTTT. No, hang on, that's IFTTT. Ah, okay, IF with as many T's afterwards as you need. MQTT Warn is a great bit of Python code created by Jan Pierre Mins. He has created a framework that supports a bucket load of internet services, and it's fairly easy to add your own. So first of all, we need to install the required Python pip package. Then install the Paho MQTT package via Python pip. Next install git, as we'll be using it to pull the source code from GitHub. Then we can pull the source, which will place it in the current directory, which we'll need to move to the opt directory. Then change to that directory, add the MQTT warn user, copy the startup defaults file, the systemd service file, so it will start as a service, the log rotate file so we don't fill up the file system with logs. Create an MQTT warn log file directory and change the owner and the MQTT warn user. Before you start the service, you'll need to make a change to the service file, which is to remove the virtual Python environment. If you use it, then of course leave it in. Then enable the MQTT warn service. Moving to your phone, install the IFTTT app from the App Store. There's also an Android app for this. Once installed, you'll need to create an account, or if you have one already, just log in. Then fire up a browser. You can actually do these next steps from your phone, but the website looked a bit clearer for this video. Sign in with your account. Next, we need to connect an IFTTT service to your account. So click on this search link and search for webhooks. Click on that, and then you can connect this to your IFTTT account. Click on Settings, as you will need to record for later the webhooks key that has been created. Now you'll need to create an applet for the MQTT warn to reference. Click on New Applet, then click on the This link and search for webhooks. Click on the webhooks link and then receive a web request link. Now type in the event name. I used Letterbox. Remember this name as you'll need this later as well. Then click on the that link so that you can tie the event to a service action. Search for notification. You could really use anything else for this. If you haven't yet connected this service to your account, it'll prompt you to connect. Then click on the send a notification link. This is where you can customize a notification message that gets sent to you. The number of deliveries will be contained in value one. Then click on create action and then finish. And that's it for IFTTT. Now back to your MQTT broker. First make the etc MQTT warn directory and create a file called mqttwarn.ini with your favorite editor. There are several key elements to the ini file. The hostname of your MQTT server and the port number that the MQTT service is listening on. The username and password of the MQTT user, check out my MQTT installation video on how to do this. Or if you're in a hurry, you can type this at the short prompt. The LD option will publish a topic message to the MQTT broker when MQTT warn stops and starts. Make sure you set your protocol to version 4 for new installs, otherwise you'll see authorized errors in the log file. Where the location message format can be configured here. You can also create functions that will translate MQTT data formats to service formats, but I'm not using this, so it's commented out. Next I load up three service providers, file, log, and IFTTT. These are referenced by these three sections. The file service will simply log data to a file. The log service will send messages to syslog, and the IFTTT service is the one we're interested in. Remember the key that I said to record? you'll need to enter it here. And also the event name from the webhook service from IFTTT. Next you'll need to tell MQTT Warn what services are subscribed to what topics. 
you can see that all topics starting from home will be sent to syslog and a file. And only topics from home letterbox delivery will be sent to IFTTT. Now just restart the MQTT WARN service and you're done. That's it, pretty easy. So does it work? Using a fake publish message from the MQTT server? Yep, works okay. It would also be nice to send a notification when someone checks the mail. Add in another target in the IFTTT section. Remember the event name for the IFTT applet. Then create a new subscription on the check topic. Then moving back to the IFTTT website, we need to create a new applet based on the webhook service. This time use the event name you used in the MQTT WARN file. And set the notification message to something appropriate. And click finish. Testing it out with some dummy messages. Yep, works okay as well. The MQTT breaker will automatically publish a message to the home letterbox state topic when the letterbox dies because the letterbox has declared a last will. Also when the ESP8266 boots up another message will be published. So it would be nice to have alerts sent for the current state of the letterbox. Adding this in is fairly trivial as well. Add the subscribe section and target into the MQTT warn file and go through a similar process on the IFTTT website. Yep, seems to work as well. In the previous video, I used a small solar panel, but I found it really hard to find a cheap way of securing it to the letterbox. So I picked up this one from JCAR. It had everything reliably waterproofed. You could probably pick one up cheaper, but make sure it's a 6 volt version, as the DF robot charger can't handle anything over that. Under my studio lights, it was generating an open circuit voltage of around 9 volts, whilst the loaded voltage dropped down to around 2.6 volts. Nice. Note the open circuit voltage of this panel can hit around 10 volts, so you have to be careful when connecting it up. So I'll need to add a weatherproof connector, so I can change the cell out if I need to. This was a two-way Deutsch connector, which guarantees no water will get in. It's pretty easy to connect it up. Theoretically, you don't need to tin the wires before crimping and solder to the connector itself. I've just seen far too many dodgy crimps, that's all. Then chuck the male side into the back of the plug so it looks like this. Then crimp and solder the other connector pins. And insert it so it looks like this. Then push in the green holdy thingy to secure the pins in place. And there you have it, a very secure waterproof connector. The other end of the cable I trimmed and tinned so I could screw into the DF Robot LiPo solar charger and allow me to remove either the panel or ESP8266 box for maintenance. Before connecting up, make sure you black out the panel because the open circuit voltage could potentially damage the LiPo charger. The voltage levels were all in spec and predictable. Chucking a battery on and checking the voltage, yep, everything seems to be working and the solar cell will charge the LiPo when there's enough photons hitting it. In a later version of this letterbox, I'll remove the LUX sensor and just use the LiPo charge indicator to see the current charge rate. Installing the solar panel was easy. I used hot glue for this as I wanted to be able to take it off easily should I need to, and also didn't want to drill any mounting holes into the letterbox, making it less waterproof. Since it was a cold day, I had to preheat both the letterbox and the ESP box so that the hot glue would stick better to the metal. Then ran some glue on the edges of the ESP box and held it in place until the glue hardened. It ended up being fairly secure. I suspect that on a very hot Australian summer, it would melt and fall off. But that's another six months away for me, and I have plenty of time to fix it properly. Next, connect up the panel and mount the rear flap sensor with a bit of gaff tape. So that the battery would start out fully charged, I left it overnight connected up to my bench power supply. I limited the current to 160 milliamps and the voltage to 6 volts. So how well does it work? First a mail delivery test. Cool. And what about checking the rear flap? A bit of a delay, but still pretty good. So there we have it, a pretty simple setup. 
I ended up spending more on this than I originally intended, but I think the end result was worth it. Leave a comment below if you made one yourself and any improvements you might have made. In a follow up video I'll be looking at battery optimization because there could be some weeks where there's not enough sun to charge the LiPo and it'll be good to be able to get a full week out of a single charge. I've also created a tutorial on this video on instructables.com and entered it into the IoT competition. So if you like this project head on over to instructables.com and vote on my project. Thanks for watching and see you next week.